everyone, Jason Morgan, content director for Babcox Media. We are hanging out with Valvoline, talking about engine life efficiency. Uh, gas engines uh, have engine deposits, right, that can uh, curtail the life of the engine. We're out here talking with Valvoline, talking about the role of mo motor oil uh, to help prevent those, even protect from them, right? They have a new Restore and Protect oil uh, that they say can remove those deposits. So we're going to check in with Valvoline. We're going to see what we can learn uh, about how it's protecting engines and maybe even creating a new category of oil. Let's check it out. So, you know, let's lay a baseline here. Let's talk about this. So gas engines. Yes. Engine deposits. Why are they bad? How do they form? Kind of run me through what those are all about. So we'll start with how they form. Okay. So at the end of the day, you know, an engine is a very severe environment. Uh, it's very hot. The temperature is your enemy in most cases, right? Right. Oil itself is made up of many different components. Right. Um, you have base oil. You have polymers to help the viscosity. You have additives that help detergency, that help have anti-wear, uh, prevent uh, uh, wear uh, in the piston area, in the valve train. Uh, you have uh, things for friction modification for fuel economy. All those molecules are a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, but at high temperatures, especially like in a piston area where you're seeing very high temperatures because of the combustion event. For sure. You can, you can see breakdown of those components. I see. And the highest temperature is on the surface of the metal itself. Right. And so what those deposits are are basically carbonaceous compounds okay. that have broken down uh, into basically carbon-based, uh, could be hard deposits, could be varnish, and have basically um, uh, applied themselves to the surface of the metal there, right. and okay. have adhered themselves to the, to the metal. Okay. Now, there's many different kinds of, of deposits. Sure. There are some that are temporary that you can wipe off with your finger. There's others that are that are a little bit thinner uh, in, in uh, thickness, and there's some that get very thick. And in the piston, you have a combination of all of all those things. Okay. The bad thing about deposits is, well, several bad things about deposits. First of all, they're very, they insulate. Okay. So one thing that you want to do in an engine, you want the, the, the metal surfaces to be as bare as possible because they actually remove the heat from the engine. Right. There's coolant or antifreeze flowing around an engine to remove heat. Right. The combustion events are constantly generating heat in an engine. Getting the heat away is one of the primary things an engine oil does Okay. Uh, besides, besides lubricate. Right. If you get deposits on the surface of that metal, you insulate and you can't get the heat out. That's right. number one. Okay. Number two is deposits also cause friction. So horsepower, you think um, fuel economy, if you don't have metal to metal um, uh, interaction or you don't have uh, you don't have the proper clearances, the lubrication, uh, you can get higher friction and, and deposits can, can increase friction. Uh, it increases the distance between metal surfaces um, and can really cause problems from, from, from that perspective. Ultimately, those basically lead to shortening the life of an engine okay. or minimizing the power or uh, efficiency, efficiency of the sure. itself. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and, and those deposits created uh, naturally, are those contaminants within the oil as well, or is that also just kind of a natural occurring and, and it kind of runs the gamut? Of yeah, right, kind of, exactly, yeah. Okay. So there's, you know, the, the obviously the, um, the deposits themselves are a combination of the, really everything that's in the oil that we start with, right? And then uh, you have byproducts coming across from the combustion event too. So you have acids coming over, you have fuel coming over right. uh, around the rings because rings aren't perfectly sealed. Right. So you do get blow, what they call blow by gases, right. which are combustion byproducts, fuel. You can get water. Right. Combination of all those things leads to sludge, yeah. right, which is a little bit more of an amorphous kind of um, uh, not a hard substance, but more like a gel or right. more like a, a – and that can that can also cause problems. Right. Uh, and then you also get deposits that form from that. So it, there's a lot of chemistry going on in an engine, a lot of components. <laughs> that can, Far that more can, than that I can, understand, you know, for and, sure. And, 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 and that can that – can, that can, and all of them are doing – most of them are in there for, for, for a good reason, mm -hmm. right? It's just that ultimately chemistry and the high temperatures and the environment tends to lead to breakdown of those components, which then can then lead to deposits on the surface of the metal. I see, ultimately. right. Ultimately. Uh, right, because then going into the formulation, right, the formulation is complex. And yes, there's base oils that a lot of brands will have in common. But then Valvoline, I mean, you have this new Restore and Protect. Tell me about that. What goes into that formulation? What are you aiming to do with it here? Yeah, we're excited about this, obviously. So you're right. So if you look at the baseline uh, oil, right, mm -hmm. uh, our, our finished oil that you buy, buy on the shelf, right? There, there's always going to be base oil in there. 85% of it is base oil. The base oil selection matters too, and it also matters in Restore and Protect. There's viscosity modifier to right. control the, uh, you know, if you want a 5W30 or a 020, the polymer helps to control viscosity. And then you have 
multiple uh, additives in there to do different things. And that additive combination is what makes each oil unique. I see. And that's what Valvoline brings to the table, 150 plus years of formulating. We are constantly looking for ways to innovate and improve and differentiate our oils. And so five years ago, when we started the Restore and Protect development, it takes a while. These things don't happen overnight. It takes a while. Um, you look at different combinations of additives to do different things. Okay. The four major reasons for engine breakdown our deposits, wear, heat, and friction. Okay. So when we, five years ago, started to look at a white paper, basically, okay, if you want to develop a new oil that's a new category, what would we do? Right. And we put together a combination of componentry that could that could, uh, that could could help those things. And then you do basically a matrix or what they call a design of experiments where you look at combinations of those things. Those additives. The those components. additives. The additives. Those additives. Okay. Yeah. And they can be detergents. Okay. They can be um, friction modifiers. They nice. can be antioxidants. They can be a different combination of dispersants, which are, are components that keep uh, uh, byproducts floating in oil. You don't want things to get to the surface of an engine. You want to sure. keep them actually in the oil itself. Those combinations what makes an oil unique. Okay. Those different combinations, it's hard to predict the performance of that. So when we started RMP, we said, okay, let's see what we different the combinations can do. You have to go on the testing. You got to do bench testing, sure. engine testing, field testing. Okay. And we didn't know what to expect, really. You really have to do the testing. It's hard to model or predict what it added to oh, really? combination okay. can do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did just because of, of duty cycle or operating environment or exactly. just or just all the alchemy that goes into whatever happens in an engine? All of the above. Okay. Right. Okay. It really is a very hard... Um, environment to model or to predict what's going to happen. Yeah. So it really requires a lot of hard work behind the scenes and basically running the testing. And by testing, I mean engine testing. So yeah. actual put the oil in an engine, run it for a certain amount of time under right. a, a certain load cycle, a certain drive cycle, like you mentioned, because that severity drives the amount of deposits. So you want to look at sure. that. There are industry tests. So when I say industry tests, there's actually specifications out there like Il Ilsac GF6. Yep. That have engine tests that are that are um, agreed to by the engine manufacturers, yep. you know, like like your OEMs, Ford, GM, Chrysler, sure. uh, oil oil manufacturers like ourselves. Right. They agree on a certain slate of testing that basically predicts or, or measures the performance of a, of an oil. One of those tests, the sequence three H, measures deposits. Okay. So we use that test as sort of the rock or the foundation to help measure the performance of the oil, which ultimately led to restore and protect. Okay, yeah, because going back to that, something you said a minute ago that I found interesting, create a new category yeah. of oil. I, you say category, I think of like API categories and different categories that go in there. So restoring the protect, how do you see this as a, as a different category? What's it doing that, that makes it, that differentiates? Great question. Right yeah, great question. So when we think category, we think really conventional, synthetic right. blend, right. synthetic, and then high mileage is a, is a category that uh, Valvoline invented over 20 years ago. Yep. That basically it, it basically takes uh, into account and 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 helps to um, uh, improve the performance of, of, of older engines. Right. Okay. When we think of RMP. We think of RMP. What I call restore and protect RMP <laughs> is is a product that that doesn't necessarily attack just the older engines, but also newer engines. Deposits oh, okay. form very quickly they you know when you buy a new car within 5,000 miles really? you're going to have deposits on on an engine and those deposits uh and the things we talked about earlier but the bad things they can do yeah um you don't want that to happen so right. we we see restore and protect as a new category because it covers uh, uh, newer engines and older engines and it also reverses the aging process so it actually removes deposits we right. have not seen in the industry an, an oil that's been shown to remove deposits like like we've shown with Restore and Protect. And the great thing about it is we have data, we have visuals, we have great visuals of pistons that have gotten cleaner with Restore and Protect. And we have we have um, a video of that. We have uh, uh, pistons that we have photo photos of yeah. that show that reversal. So it's so a reverse. So like, <laughs> like for example, I've got a 180,000 mile Toyota, yeah. right, that I'm running. Yeah. Uh, so that would... You're saying the restore and protect. I get the protect on the newer engine, right? You start using that right away. You're going to keep it clean and looking nicer. But you're you're talking about. I mean, this is years. This this car is like 11 or 12 years old now, right? You're talking about years of yeah, pulling yeah. that off the piston. It is, yeah. You know, and engines. You know, the OEMs have gotten so much better at making engines. Even 180,000 miles is not a lot. This is of what miles. people keep telling me, but I can't believe it. Right? It's not a lot of miles on an engine. But if 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 it, from from your duty cycle perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of people drive severely. Mm -hmm. uh, you may. Or I don't. You know what? I tried to do my best. 
best. I try to do my best. But it's not. It's not your fault. It could be that you're towing the boat. It could be that you're. Oh, sure, right. Kids, yeah, kids to practice. It could you be you're on, sitting in traffic. Well, like dude, Andrew, you get into some of those vocational applications too, where you have even some of the last mile operations, or exactly. you get into some of the construction stuff, or maybe you're running a Ford F one fifty and towing your boat oh, yeah. on the weekend, oh, yeah. right? The load on that engine is really what drives the severity inside the engine. Yeah. So what the oil sees, what the engine sees, right. what the metal parts see. And that is what I mean by severe. Not that, you know, you're, you drive. <laughs> not that I'm a terrible driver. I appreciate that. I <laughs> but got engines it. like to drive fast. I mean, if you at the end of the day, they want to drive in a very small, in a, in a, not small window, but a very. Yeah, that efficiency uh, window. Efficiency that window running window. at it kind of low RPMs, higher speeds, keeping it right in that They hate spot. low RPMs. They don't like idling. Right. You know, they don't like starting and stopping. Right. So uh, they'd rather be on the highway going 65, 70, right. 75 miles an hour. So, so that severity is what really drives that. And right. so if you look at what our, we're right, sorry, protect does it actually helps to alleviate the um the issues that brings so yeah. it can actually remove deposits that form because of that type of driving right so if i'm let's say i'm a counter professional right i'm working the counter i'm working with uh you know shop owners and commercial customers i'm working with uh, do-it-yourselfers that yeah. come in and are interested in this what's important for me to know uh to explain to them right because we talk about formulation it gets really complicated it's very interesting right i love it but as a as a counter professional it's only maybe interacting with that person that D diy or just for a couple minutes or even my commercial customers that i know quite a bit how, how do i pitch that to them yeah, I think the, you know, first and foremost, I think, is is the visuals that we have that demonstrate the performance of the oil itself, right? right. So, so really, there is a problem to be solved out there. Their deposits are an issue in the industry. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, if you look at, there's going to be a new GS7 specification coming right. out. And in that, the OEMs wanted better deposit performance. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, they know that deposits are still an issue. I see. And so you can you can you can tell your customer, hey, you know, deposits are an issue. OEMs are th know they're an issue. They want to improve that. They want to get better and better there. They know it can 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 lead to early uh, engine life or, or right. basically the death of an engine. Right. Ultimately, Reducing that's one piece of it. Second piece is, hey, look how this product performs. We have visuals showing that there's a removal of deposits, that there is a a, um, uh, a reversing of the aging process in an engine. That's a great case story to tell. The other thing is that this oil is a fully formulated oil that meets industry specifications. Mm -hmm. It is an oil that utilizes um, chemistry that is, is performs in all the other categories that are necessary okay. around um, fuel economy performance, yep. sludge performance, wear yep. performance. It is an oil that you can use over and over again. And that's a great thing for, for the story to tell is, hey, this is an oil that you don't just use once. It's an oil that you want to use over and over again with each oil change I see. to continue that performance. So it, it, is, it is a story that is, is you know, the engine's always going to be there's always going to be deposits formed right? Or and minimizing those and reversing those is always going to be something that you want to do. Well, and you mean, what's interesting to me there is you, you say, you know, the OEMs are aware of it. We're going to have uh, categories that address it and, and look to address it. But once the engine is out in the wild, it seems like the oil is the workhorse that's helping to do that, right? I mean, is this something that you consider from an oil formulation uh, perspective? Is this something that you've been trying to tackle for a while? And is that the responsibility of you as the oil formulator to tackle that? Because the engine manufacturer doesn't have much say in it. You know, once I buy the yeah. car, I'm putting whatever I want in it to some degree, right? That's now, right. I've got the viscosity level that I have to put on it, but, you know, I can go off the shelf and get the cheapest one, or I can get something that's actually going to protect my engine. Yeah, from a you know from a OEM perspective, obviously they want the engine to last as long as possible too, right? Because they have warranty they have to worry about. They don't sure. want their engines failing early, so they have a specification you want to meet. But the specification that's out there is a minimum performance specification. So it's I like, see. hey, this is what we want an oil to meet on the minimum basis. I see. And okay. Avaline, we want to do better than that. We sure. Want to, we want to exceed that, and we want to see exceed it in all categories. Uh, we also wanted to do something different than everybody else. That's what Restore and Protect does. I see. It differentiates ourselves from our competitors. It um, it does something that no other engine oil does in, in, in the marketplace right now. Uh, and it really does uh, bring uh, performance and advantage to an end consumer at a at a cost point that is 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 comparable to a it's a premium synthetic it's synthetic oil yeah uh, so in that category it's uh, at a price point that that um, is competitive with every, with everyone else so well, it, it has value too and i love i you know and i think that's something that i even i forget too that the specification is 
uh, to your point, the baseline. It is. Right? It's a because it's easy to think of it, oh, that's the barn. We're all clearing it. It's all great. No, it's like everyone here on the shelf is clearing it. It's the extra step that you go. It's the extra innovation that you put into it there. That's what we always want to do. So that is that is my job. That's my team's job. Cool. I have a great uh, group of scientists and tribologists and engineers who are always trying to do more and right. to and to basically raise the bar higher than it is currently performance wise. And you have to balance the formulation. You know, there's always uh, you know engine oil formulating is a little bit about give and take. Mm-hmm. Um, the engine is a very complex machine. You have different temperatures, different pressures. Um, uh, it, it's just a, it is really a very interesting field when you start digging into it. Uh, and so it requires a lot of data, requires a lot of testing, and that's what we do. We have our own engine lab in Ashland, Kentucky. We have our, our, our lab in Lexington. We do tons of testing, data-driven, yeah. um, and that's what we live for. 